delivering sushi to a grand, Japanese-style mansion. I rang the doorbell, and as the door swung open, I could hear vows of marriage echoing from within. I'll cherish your daughter for a lifetime. The voice of a husband reached from the depths of the room. But thinking I must have misheard, I handed the sushi over to the recipient and left the doorstep. Then, a call for Johnson from inside the house caught my attention. That's my last name too. Driven by curiosity, I peered into the mansion's porch from where the voice emanated. In an instant, a chill ran down my spine as if ice was pressed against my back. It was my husband. I hurried back to the entrance and rang the doorbell again. Is there something else? The person getting married is my husband. I moved towards the living room, and my husband's voice, incredulous as it was, grew louder. Just as I cherished my late wife, I'll cherish your daughter for a lifetime. At that moment, I flung the sliding door open with force. My name is Emily Johnson, a 33-year-old homemaker. I met my husband, Scott, also 33, at what you'd call a mixer. I had been working in fashion since graduating from vocational school, surrounded mostly by women, leaving little room for romantic encounters until a colleague invited me to a co dinner. Scott, a manager at such a young age, seemed dazzling to 29-year-old me. Back then, I couldn't see why he worked so hard to be promoted so young. It was his intense obsession with money. In the beginning, our dates were always at upscale restaurants, a gesture that made me feel cherished and special. But once we got married, his penny-pinching ways and greediness came to light. And then the wheels of my relationship with my husband began to go haywire after that day. When we came home that evening, he suddenly suggested, Maybe it's time to hang up the homemaker hat and jump back into the workforce, huh? What? His suggestion hit me like a curveball. Is there trouble at work? Are we in some kind of financial pinch? Expecting a straightforward answer. I was met with ambiguity. Well, it's not exactly about work troubles. I instantly became suspicious of my husband, who was at a loss for words, and immediately questioned him. When we got married, you told me to quit my job right now because it wouldn't look good to the people around us if you couldn't support a woman. That's why I reluctantly quit my job as a dressmaker, which I loved, so what's the point now? Then my husband, for some reason, angrily retorted. Look, the situation's different now. We need more income. You knew there might come a time when this would be necessary. I'm just saying now's that time. Just work. Things have changed. What the hell is he talking about? That it was the same with my time? Such an abstract explanation is totally incomprehensible and unconvincing. But I wanted to get out of this husband Hasamoto as soon as possible. In matters of finance, he digs his heels in, in wavering until he's convinced he has arrived at the right conclusion. Besides, I'm welcome to work part-time. Since leaving my career behind, I've thrown myself into sewing as a hobby. Yet, there's always been something missing. What about that vintage clothes shop near the station? I said this in remembrance of a vintage clothes shop I saw on my way home from the grocery store the other day. Then my husband's eyes widened and said, A vintage shop? Are you serious? That's not happening. I love vintage fashion. How can you call it dirty? Look, just do something I'm not ashamed of. There are probably any number of good stores in that apartment store in front of the station. And the better stores would probably pay you an hourly wage. Oh my goodness. When my husband finished eating and disappeared into the bedroom, I sighed softly as I washed the dishes. Am I not allowed to pursue something I'm passionate about? My husband certainly has a respectable job with a good salary. It has certainly allowed me to live in a property near a train station in the middle of the city. But I didn't realize that was such a stifling life. I wonder if other families in this town are suffering from similar struggles. There is money, but no purpose in life. Can I say that I am happy now? I pondered for a while like that. But I was certain that the status quo would not change if things continued as they were. The next day, I immediately looked for the stores in the department stores my husband mentioned that had job openings. When he came home, I broached the subject, mentioning a high-end sushi restaurant within the store that was hiring. Um, that sushi place might be all right. My husband gave permission to an established, high-end sushi restaurant. It was certainly the most magnificent store of the candidates. Of course, that's the one he'd agree to. I thought to myself. That's how I ended up working at this upscale sushi restaurant. It led me towards a future I could never have predicted. At this moment, I had stepped into the world line that would lead to that dreadful day. Unaware of this, I was working hard at my new job at the time. First, I learned to cook and serve food. Once I was able to work in the store, I was also given the task of delivering deliveries. That day was the first day I was assigned to deliver a delivery by myself. I was surprised when I arrived at the delivery destination. 
I was surprised to see my debut in such a gorgeous house. It was a Japanese-style mansion with the atmosphere of a good old Japanese house. And the entrance and the large garden surrounding it created a majestic atmosphere. The owner could be a strict man. I hope I didn't do anything rude. I had a strange premonition at the moment. I rang the doorbell, feeling my heart beating slightly higher, and a woman who must have been in my parents' generation came out. She was elegantly dressed in a luxurious material, and it was easy to tell that she was having an important dinner today. She said, I'm sorry, but would you mind carrying me to the back of the room so I can show you around? I don't want to get my precious clothes dirty. The woman took one look at the large sushi tub and said to me, Yes, ma'am, that's a lovely outfit. Thank you. It's an outfit that has been handed down in my family for generations to wear on important occasions. I see. With this conversation, I carried the sushi to the front of the now sliding door. That's all there is to it. Thank you for your time. No problem. Please enjoy your meal at your leisure. I was about to leave when I heard a voice from inside. My ex-wife died of an illness. I actually thought I would never love another woman but her. I met Sarah and something changed in my heart. Asahi is the only person who could cheer me up when I was down and make me feel love again. Apparently a wedding greeting. It also appears that the man is deadbeat with his ex-wife. Good for him for finding happiness again. I left the place with that thought. Then I went straight out the door and bowed to the woman. What is it? What is this feeling of being pulled back? I know it in my head. I know in my head that it can't be true. I know, I know, but I couldn't stop thinking about it. The man's voice. It sounded exactly like my husband's. I care. I couldn't help it. Unable to suppress this feeling. I went around to the backside of the mansion on instinct. I felt guilty as if I was peeping into the house, but I could not resist the urge. The back of the mansion opened up to a large garden, and behind it, I could see a vaulted living room. At that moment, my body froze. The man was dressed in a suit and sitting on his haunches with a serious expression on his face. It was unmistakably my husband. My husband is in a mansion that looks like a strange house, and he is saying his wedding greetings. What the hell is this? I didn't know what was going on, and just found myself walking around to the front door again. Then I put my finger on the intercom again prompted by instinct. Is there something else you needed? The woman who had just opened the door said curiously when she saw me. I was too upset and the man who is about to marry your daughter is my husband. I just shouted. Excuse me? What did you just say? Excuse me for interrupting. Not paying attention to the woman standing there in a daze, I took off my shoes and made a short run for the living room in the back. At that time, behind the sliding doors, it was just he climax. I will cherish your daughter for the rest of my life as I did with my ex-wife. The word was released. The next moment, I opened the sliding door with great vigor. I'm the wife whom wasn't cherished. The area became quiet as if time had stopped. Among all the people who were not moving an inch, my husband was the only one who was trembling. I could not forgive him. He was the one who had ruined my four years of time and feelings. And I couldn't understand why he looked as if his life was over. I'm the one who wants to make that face. Who are you? The one who broke the silence seemed to be the father of the fiancé my husband was about to marry. I am this man's, Scott's wife, I assured. Then a young, pretty, pretty woman sitting next to her husband opened her eyes wide. Hey, what do you mean? When the man raised his voice, her husband began to make excuses to calm him down. No, this isn't right. I think she has got the wrong guy, because... My husband, who seemed to be concerned about the way I was looking at him, said in a whisper. My ex-wife is already gone. At that moment, I remembered what I heard when I brought them sushi. Yes, this guy. Pretended as I was dead. I felt as if my head was about to bile. What? You're going to pretend I'm dead on your own, and try to remarry this woman amicably. That's not going to happen. You can remarry or not, but first you must divorce me firmly and pay me alimony. And I will make sure that your partner knows about this situation. My husband stood up and walked over to me. He looked like a monster, and I quickly backed away fearing that he might strike me at any moment. Then he said something I could not believe. Um, are you all right? I don't know what kind of history you have, but if you keep ruining our precious time, I will contact your restaurant and call the police. To my surprise, my husband completely treated me like a stranger and turned me down. My husband was followed by my fiancé's father, who stood up with a frown on his face. Yeah, this is a problem, please leave. I was momentarily disturbed by his words, but quickly regained my composure. No, it was 100% my husband's fault. If I could prove that, I would win. I remembered. 
delivery drivers always carried their ID in a specific pocket of their pouch for easy access. I opened my hip pouch and took it out. I'm Emily Johnson. Johnson is a common surname, isn't it? You've got the wrong guy. Then why don't you show me your driver's license right now? You'll get the address in a flash, won't you? The husband became very upset. What nonsense, that's, that's a fake ID to trap. Don't make up such absurd accusations. Fake? Well, if you're so convinced, let's have the police verify this ID. I pull my cell phone out of the pouch on my hip and press 110. Holding it up to my ear without actually making the call, I watched as the room was enveloped in a palpable tension. After about six seconds of silence, the man who had been keeping his mouth opened his mouth. She's not dead, she's alive. Please do not call the police. What? Everyone present, except the husband, seemed to have guessed everything by this statement of his. The silence came again. And eventually my husband seemed to have grasped the situation in time and began to explain. No, no, no. Though she's my wife, she's very sick, and she's going to pass away soon. As the husband began to make unintelligible excuses, the fiancé's father next punched him in the face. Ouch. This is outrageous. You've crossed a line. Consider this engagement over. This is outrageous. Oh my god. It's over. The husband began to get down on his knees as he plopped down on the spot. The woman next to him, his fiancé, was sobbing her eyes out. But the husband continued to make his case without regard to her. I will divorce her soon. I will never bigamy. I have enough money to pay alimony, and I am not the kind of man who would break the law. So please forgive me. I involuntarily interrupted my husband's argument. What? That's not what this is about. You broke your promise before you broke the law. You betrayed me and your girlfriend here, didn't you? I handed my handkerchief to his fiancée, whose makeup was smeared with copious tears. I don't think she would agree to marry a man who only makes excuses for himself. Leaving the woman crying next to him. And alimony, 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 money can't solve everything in this world. Have you become so obsessed with money that you have forgotten the human heart? Didn't you choose her for her money anyway? Betraying someone's feelings is a much more complicated problem that cannot be solved by law, but by money. I and all of us here will never get rid of the emotional scars of being betrayed by you. No matter how much money you give us in the form of alimony, it will never be completely healed. Yes, she's right. You, a man with such a splendid wife, were doing this. So you are just after money after all. You just want to live a good life. No, that's not it at all. No one was willing to lend credence to his words anymore. It's just ridiculous. If you want high-class sushi, then eat as much as you want. Here, take this. Exclaimed Sarah's father, as he vigorously grabbed a piece of sushi from the lavish spread on the table and forcefully stuffed it into Scott's mouth. Ops. And just like that, my husband was kicked out of the house by his fiancé's father. I then apologized profusely to the three of them after my husband was gone, exchanged contact information, and left. The conversation about the divorce with Scott didn't take long to commence after that. Scott, ever the nitpicker, began to quibble over every little detail concerning the alimony, leaving me to marvel at his pettiness. What was he talking about? Of course I have enough income to pay alimony. I was appalled. After all, the man was just greedy for money. He even started to argue about the ratio of property division. And I snapped, if you want to make it any harder, we can go to court. The liar next to him said, Since the divorce was based on your husband's adultery, I think the ratio of property division on his side will be unfavorable. The husband finally agreed, and they settled on an alimony payment of 4.5 million yen, with the husband's share of the property at about 30%. When everything was settled, my ex-husband's parents visited my parents' home to apologize for the incident. The ex-husband's fiancé was a major business partner of my ex-husband's, and the company suffered a huge loss because of this incident. Needless to say, the engagement was broken off. He has also claimed some amount of alimony from the other side. My ex-husband is looking for a new job as soon as possible. But he is very particular about his salary and is having a hard time finding a new job. I thought it was really stupid of him not to realize that he needed to change himself before asking others to do so. I, on the other hand, resigned from the sushi restaurant and returned to my parents' house. I got a part-time job working in a clothing business near my parents' house. And I was able to get back to a full life. After all, for me, time to do what I love is more important than money.